G'day guys, Shane Mostyn here. I've been taking photos of the stars with my phone for a few years now, and the iPhone 13 Pro has just come out. They reckon the night mode is 2 times, 2.2 times better than what it was previously. Let's see if it is. I'm lucky enough that where I live here in North Central Victoria in Australia, I've got very little light pollution. So if you're gonna do what I'm about to show you how to do, you're gonna to need to move away from that light pollution a bit to sort of replicate these results. What I'm gonna to do tonight is the Milky Way, the galactic core is coming down here and the tail of it is roughly in the direction where I'm going to shoot. Um, the moon is about an hour and a half from rising, so we need to get this done pretty quickly because the moon is gonna to throw too much light and it's gonna affect it pretty badly. So what I've got here, I've been able, I've been lucky enough to get this here truck, this old Bedford truck here, and it's going to be, in my mind, this is how it's going to work. This is going to be the foreground subject, and I'm going to light this with a little bit of light and have the Milky Way, or the tail of that galactic core, that row of stars coming up above it, like in a line directly above it. So it's going to be a, a vertical, like a portrait orientated photo, like ver vertical, up and down. It's a very clear night, um, you can see can you see? I'm not sure if you can see with that. There's a little star right there. That's Venus. That's kind of cool, huh? Anyway, very, very clear sky. I'm going to set this camera up, set this phone up, and uh, we'll see what we can do. They say that when this phone was to be launched, like at the, at the release that they did, this phone, the 13, uh, iPhone 13, is going to have a wider aperture. And, and all the things that really came out with that launch, I was kind of like, yeah, I've got the 12 Pro Max. Do I really need to go there? that uh, you guys asked for it, so I'm delivering it. What I'd noticed though, is that the aperture is wider. It's this much wider. And that means it's going to let in more light. So in theory, it is going to be better than the 12 Pro Max, especially for what we do here on this channel here, the low light stuff. What I'm gonna do first is a handheld photo of this truck. I've still got a light sitting over on the side there. You can't see it here, but it's shining on the side of the truck. And I'm going to take a handheld shot, and a handheld with iPhones in night mode is going to give us a maximum of 10 seconds only. So I'll open up the camera app. There's the truck. And I'm going to touch up here on the stars. I'll turn raw off. I don't want to shoot raw. I'm going to hit up here where the yellow button is, where it says three seconds. That's going to give us night mode on the iPhone. I'm going to swipe this all the way to the left, so I've got 10 seconds showing down the bottom here. Again, I was going to touch on the stars. I'll hit the shutter button, and it's recording right now. It's taking that photo right now. A little cross will appear, and those crosses, or two of them will appear if you're moving too much. And it's basically there to help you like guide the camera onto itself so you're not moving around too much. Now, for a handheld shot, that's not too bad. I don't think that's any better than what the 12 was. I think the telltale is going to be putting it on a tripod and shooting for that longer period. I've got a feeling it's going to be better. So let's do that. Well, you may not know that 10 seconds with uh, iPhone night mode, 10 seconds is the maximum you can do handheld. If you want to do longer than that, it's got to go onto a tripod. And uh, I've got a tripod somewhere here. I'll find it and I'll show you what we're going to do. As far as tripods go, it doesn't really matter what sort of tripod you use. It's a, it's a phone, tripods are built to withstand a certain amount of weight. They're rated on weighting, and they're like for big DSLR cameras and so forth, so the phone doesn't really take up that much space. You are going to need a phone holder though. All this gear that I'm using here, it's linked down the bottom and you can, um, you can get it if you want or don't if you don't. And to get this photo to work, I'm going to need a light source, and what I've done, I've actually brought out another phone with me. This is the 12 Pro Max. Um, because I'm also doing a comparison video, so make sure you subscribe so you can see that one when it comes out as well. But what I'm going to do is use the 13 Pro Max to take the photo, I'll use the torch on the 12 Pro Max, and we'll put a little bit of light onto the subject when we take this photo. We'll open up the camera app, you can see there's a fair bit of light coming from the video lights I'm using here, so I'll turn them off when I actually take this photo. But uh, I'm gonna to touch on the star, focus on the stars, hit the night mode button, that yellow button, and now when I swipe down, because I'm on a tripod, it's going to give us all that time, that 30 seconds, and we'll hit the shutter button, and now we wait. While we're waiting for that to be taken, uh, if you're into this sort of photography, I do two videos each and every week, all about small sense of photography, uh, basically with mobile phones, and we try and do lots of things at night time when we can, and if you have subscribed, <laughs> you're a bloody legend. Let's just wait for this thing to finish. This is almost finished, it is finished now. Let's go and have a look at this thing. 
<laughs> that is so much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, I was a little bit skeptical. I didn't really want to let on too much with that in the beginning of the video, but that's awesome. That is better than a 12 by a long way, a long, long way. I know about two times, two, two, two point two times better, but I think that's a damn sight better. And this is the reason I think it's better. Have a look at this photo. This is for a phone. The foreground on this is absolutely impressive. This is probably the best phone. Even the Samsung, even the Huawei, they both struggle in night mode with foreground subjects. And the iPhones always struggled with foreground subjects in low light when I'm shooting the stars. It just has, and they all do it. In fact, um, there's, there's a guy I follow on Instagram, Russell Brown, go and check him out. He actually does multiple exposures for the foreground uh, subject and the night sky, and then he'll bring them together in Photoshop. Once he sees this, I'd be surprised if he keeps doing that because that has blended it incredibly well. Sure, the sky is not as good as some of the, the uh, manual mode phones, but this is a one push of a button, don't need to do anything else, very easy to use. The foreground on that, the truck, keep in mind I didn't focus on the truck, that's the LiDAR doing that I think. And um, what I'm going to do, because <laughs> that's really bloody impressive, um, where that light is on the ground in, in the foreground now, I'm actually going to take another couple of shots here um, or from the left and from the right um, with the light um, and we'll, we'll light up some of that foreground on the right on the left hand side of the, the truck as we look at it. That is really impressive. The foreground, that, that, that truck is just, that's just amazing. The sky isn't that great, but we'll edit this up shortly. But that's really impressive. I, I'm, I'm kind of lost for words. It's, it's really well done. Look, the moon's about to come up. We're not that far away, so I really want to get some cool photos in before uh, it comes up, and I'll show you guys what they are looking like in just a second. But there's a few rules with this sort of photography and to get the sort of results that I'm getting here. And so far, I'm really bloody impressed. Um, one, you've got to get away from light pollution. So go to lightpollutionmap.info. I'll link it down the bottom there. Use that map, use that website, that map on that website, put in your location. It's going to show you locations that are close to you with a lower bottle number. A bottle number is basically your light pollution, how dark it is in that location. And where I am here is a bottle three. So it's pretty bloody dark. It can be darker, but it's pretty dark. Two, with the light pollution, don't worry too much about that galactic core. If you want to know how to find that, I'll link down the bottom there. Actually, I'll put a link up wherever it is there. And there's a, there's a video there how to plan how to shoot that galactic core, that, that Milky Way. Um, uh, three, with your light painting, don't ever paint light, like don't shine light directly in front of the camera. Like if I'm using this phone here and I'm taking a photo of you, I don't want to shine the light from here. I want to shine it from over here so it casts a shadow. If we have a look at that truck here behind me, if I move this torch, move this light, just over there a little bit, see the difference that's made to that truck? It's casting now shadows across the front of it, and that's the sort of thing you want to do. Um, this sort of photography, <laughs> the result that I got from that phone, that iPhone 13, and the results that I'll get, I guarantee I'll be able to replicate that now that I've seen that, I can make it better. But just by doing what I'm talking about here, just use that light, light the ground, light the vehicle, but not for long time, not for long periods of time. You just need to shine it slowly like that, done. And uh, do it multiple times around the vehicle and you'll get the sort of results that I'm doing here. So sit back and relax and watch what I've just taken because I think you're going to love it. What I'll do now, I'll take a heap more photos just before that moon comes up and ruins the whole situation for me. At the end of this, I'll show you what they look like and I'll show you how to edit some of these photos as well. Seriously, how good is that? That's just bloody amazing. It's so much better than what I thought it was going to be. The stars are not as good as like the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, in my opinion. I, think, I don't think the stars are as good as that, but the foreground, the foreground is better than any other phone I reckon I've seen. I absolutely love the Samsung S21 Ultra and the Huawei P40 Pro. They both do a sensational job of taking photos of the sky at night of the stars, but they both struggle with foreground subjects when you're trying to do it all in one photo. They just do. Um, but this does it really, really well. What I'm gonna do, I'll show you how to edit one of these photos. So I'll just pull out, uh, oh, which one? We'll go with, go with this one, and we're gonna bring it straight into Lightroom. 
I really like that photo. You can see Venus just above the bonnet of the truck there. You've got the Milky Way, the galactic core sitting up there. Um, overall, that's a, just a, a bloody good photo. And, and to be honest, I don't think we need to do too much to this at all. If I hit the auto button down the bottom there, uh, more often than not, Lightroom doesn't do a good job with the auto, with phone astrophotography or phone nightscape photography. It just doesn't do it. So I'll hit the return button up the top there, or the undo button, and we'll do this ourselves. We'll increase the contrast only a little bit with editing these things less is more when it comes to blacks we'll bring the blacks down a little bit um, go to color and i'll increase the magenta just a little if i touch on the screen and hold it and let it go you can see the before and after there yeah, it doesn't look too bad if i go across now to the effects tab and this is my favorite tab when it comes to these sorts of photos i'm going to increase the clarity just a little bit and increase the dehazing just a little bit as well. It's gonna make the stars pop that little bit and it'll get rid of that haze that you see between Venus and the vehicle uh, a little bit better. Overall, I think that's a bloody good photo. Now, I'm gonna go back to the light and increase the shadows just to bring out some, hopefully some more detail on the truck it's going to in the foreground. On the foreground it will. Better idea here is just to use a bit of local adjustment. I'll get a brush. I'll go to selective edits, hit the plus, go to brush, and I'm going to brush in the foreground down there, and hit light, and increase the shadows. That way I'm only increasing the shadows in the foreground, not all the sky. And, well, I think that's pretty bloody good. I'm gonna hit the tick on that, hit export, save it to camera roll, and we are done. Overall, I'm blown away by that. I didn't think it was going to be as good as what it is. The stars are better than the 12 Pro Max, I think, and I'll definitely do a comparison video soon. Um, and uh, um, well, and the foreground subject, bloody hell, that's impressive. That is so impressive. It's got to be using the light out. It just has to be. That's that's just that's blown me away. It's really, really impressive. If you're into this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe. There's also a Facebook group over there at uh, Shane Moster Mobile Photography Bloody Legends. Uh, I'll link it down the bottom. Go over there, join that group. Show us the photos that you're taking. Try and do what I'm doing here. You're gonna have a ball of fun doing it. It's just so much fun. And if you wanna help support this channel down the bottom there, there's a join button. Uh, you can join up, be a member on this channel. You get a live video every uh, once a month. We do live videos here anyway, every two weeks and give stuff away. But when we give stuff away, if you're a member, you don't need to actually be there. I'll just throw you in the drawer anyway. And if you are a member, all those presets that are over there on phonephotoschool.com.au, they're yours for free. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.